All right, well, welcome to uh, the fourth RCN workshop uh, at NYU uh, uh, Brooklyn. And it's, of course, on millimeter wave research uh, and uh, technology. And uh, I am representing, and this is in, in some ways, uh, I can only represent one or the other at any one point in time. But uh, I'm representing NSF, first and foremost, since I've been a program director there since November. And I'm also, uh, you know, from the University of Wisconsin. So, uh, welcome, everyone. We have an exciting program uh, going on, and of course, it's great to be here uh, at NYU uh, as uh, one of the big players in, uh, and uh, movers and shakers of millimeter wave wireless. Okay, so this is a slide that I've been using since the beginning, and it's still the, there were exciting times when it started, 2016. That's when uh, you know I've, I ran into. Ted there at the announcement of uh, the FCC uh, Sp Spectrum Frontiers announcement. Um, and this RCN is part of uh, that related announcement by NSF on a 400 million advanced wireless initiative, uh, which was the brainchild of Thiaga and Nandagopal. He couldn't be here uh, today. But this is one of uh, parts of that initiative. And of course, the PAR platform, which two of them were announced recently. Uh, NYU and Rutgers and Columbia are part of one, and then that's a Cosmos, and then um, uh, Powder at uh, Utah, Salt Lake City. So that's great. And you know, there's a lot of, uh, it's a big part of uh, 5G, as we all know, gigabit speeds, millimeter wave, milli millisecond latency, although that's still a challenging task, and hopefully there'll be some exciting discussion on that. And several use cases, but the big one initially is going to be the fixed uh, wireless. That's going to be happening, and then some people think it's the killer app for autonomous vehicles, or and then eventually we'll get to small cell mobile devices too, and backhaul is already being used. A lot of frequencies, FCC has played a big role, and a lot of exciting developments that we'll get to hear more today as well. Just to give you a quick <clears throat> uh, background of where it's coming from, for, especially for those who are coming here for the first time, uh, you know there are. Three big areas that we think hardware, networking, communication, and signal processing algorithms that play a role in wireless in general and millimeter wave in particular. And we've been talking about cross layer for a long time, but this is really an area where cross layer can't be, uh, interaction can't be ignored. You know, you're just going to sub optimize things. And prototypes and test beds make a big uh, impact here as power platform, and that's going to be a big discussion here as well. Uh, and then industry, academia, government agencies, all are playing a role, national labs as well. And so the goal here is to really cross-fertilize the ideas across the three uh, players or classes of players in the, to fuel the development of millimeter wave wireless technology. Now, it's easier said than done, but you know we've been trying our best. And so we've had three workshops. Uh, starting in DC, and then uh, Madison, and then last one in Tucson, and I think Marwan Kroons, our host there, is uh, around here too. He's part of a member of the steering committee. And uh, so here's a <clears throat> steering committee, a whole bunch of uh, people here. Uh, NY Sandeep Rangan, the local host here. Uh, he should be around here somewhere. There he is. Uh, and then Jim is not here. Uh, Ismail is here from uh, NC State. Marwan is here. Hanglu is here. Ali broke his, or injured his, not broke, luckily. Injured his knee, so he can't be here. Soccer fan. And Amitava was out in Santa Clara, maybe still there. I think Osga is here from Qualcomm. And uh, Carlos couldn't be here. Ashwin is, was at 5G. He's back. And uh, Ian has a rep here, Charlie. And Kate Remley is here from NIST. And Tommy Swenson from uh, Chalmers is there, too. So we have a good attendance. These people uh, guide us to some extent. And here is a new NSF building. If you haven't been there, come and visit us. Send us your great ideas. Serve on panels. It's very convenient. 10-minute metro ride from Reagan. And uh, our offices are on the 14th floor on the east wing. Um, OK, so some big themes uh, that have emerged, which are going to be emphasized here, too, is hardware signal processing interface, signal processing networking interface. And last time, we had a very exciting uh, discussion on the interplay with the 5G NR standard, which are coming from 3GBP, and then the Wi-Fi standard. And they're kind of evolving, decoupled, but there's some 
possibility for synergy, and appropriate channel models for both. And of course, this is a, a place uh, where a lot of channel modeling has happened. And then really the need for test beds for research and experimentation at academia. Everyone has said they're very expensive. Uh, and the technology, the way it's going to evolve is changing. So that's an important theme that we're going to emphasize here too. And I'll say a little bit more about that. There's a breakout dedicated to that. And hopefully, we'll also discuss it in the panel discussions. And the venues for new conferences, journals, I think there's activity happening here. And we've been looking at some of the problems related to uh, these interface areas and some big challenges that industry and academia can address together. And I don't know how many, I think a lot of people feel the same way that collectively, I don't think we are really unleashing our innovation potential in terms of industry and academia collaborating. It's not an easy problem, but we're not doing our best. Uh, so testbed development, as I already mentioned, I'll just put in a plug for NSF programs, which are very relevant to this. So if you are interested in building it, you know, there's MRI, Major Research Instrumentation Program. That's a little bit smaller, although it's fairly big too, which is January 1st to 22nd in uh, 2019 is the deadline, and then the size Research Infrastructure Program, uh, the preliminary proposal on November 7th, and full proposal in uh, January again. Um, and uh, so don't forget the website. I'm just going to quickly go through some of the posts that I put in there over, or we put in there over the time. So this was happening in January. They're like, oh, a lot of progress made uh, on fixed wireless access. Uh, and then, of course, uh, you know, big announcement that the next iPhones will be built in Wisconsin, Foxconn. So that was uh, um, happening there, which is exciting. Uh, so fixed wireless is a big deal. There was another. This is uh, you know a lot of interplay on that. And then Huawei and NTT uh, had a major milestone um, in Japan. Uh, and uh, then KT, uh, to, you know showed some another in a additional data distribution during the Olympics. And then uh, FC proposed an uh, auction of the 28 gigahertz spectrum. This was the power announcement. One of them, Salt Lake City and NYC. Um, New York City get the you know cosmos and powder as I mentioned earlier. Then the fixed home, you know, this is from going from the outside to the inside. Uh, and then um, this is getting towards the consumer devices. And then the 5G NR uh, standalone uh, standard or specification has been uh, approved. And so that was one of the things in June. And this is one of the slides from <coughs> uh, last time that I had put in Tucson, which was one of the articles that, you know, what uh, Alan Gatherer runs. And they're great. The titles are, you know, makes you pissed off or mad or what, what's going on. And so this was one of the articles <clears throat> by John Chiaffi and his team about a DSL, the next uh, generation of DSL. And uh, I wanted to get John to come and talk in Tucson. That didn't happen, but we are very fortunate to have him here talk about uh, these waveguide modes in, uh, uh, in DSL for as a compliment to you know the last mile, it's a great player to have our first keynote speaker, uh, first John Chiaffi from uh, Stanford, and also the CEO of ASEA Incorporated. And you know he doesn't need any introduction. He's uh, got his uh, undergrad from uh, Illinois, uh, great school, and then he went to Stanford, almost as good. Uh, and he did his uh, PhD, got his PhD there, and then he went to, I think, uh, IBM for a little bit, or, and then he started his career at Stanford uh, as an assistant professor in 86, I think, or somewhere around there. <clears throat> and then he left to, in 91 to uh, form Amadi Corporation, uh, where the DSL started. And uh, it was uh, acquired by, I think, TI in 98. And, uh, and then that was not the end of it. In uh, 2003, he formed a CI Incorporated, I think, if I remember correctly, to kind of really uh, move it and move it DSL to the next level. And he's been involved uh, in that ever since. Uh, and uh, 
And he's got many, many awards, uh, of course, and uh, Marconi Award, Alexander Graham Bell Medal, and uh, he's a member of the National Academy of Engineering. So uh, without further ado, you know, uh, John, please take it away. Thank you for coming. <laughs> okay, sorry.